Hello and welcome to the Readers and Writers Lounge. Now I know many of you are stuck at home at the moment, self-isolating, which is a terrible thing to have to do. We all are suffering slightly because of it. Um, so I've decided to put a little bit of a challenge out to everybody. That's to get a well-known story and to make it your own, to rewrite it in under uh, 2,000 words. It's a good uh, practice for a, a new novelist especially to do this because most of the characters are in place, the scenery is in place, the plot is mostly there. You've just got to put your own twist on it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier um, when you're first venturing out into the world of writing. So this is a, a challenge for you to write your own short story. You could do something from Disney, you could do something from history, you could uh, do a, a famous author, um, any author that you would like, uh, Roald Dahl or... You, could, you pick Neil Gaiman, you rewrite something and uh, make it your own. Under 2,000 words, record it, put it on the Readers and Writers Lounge Facebook page and whoever gets the most likes by, ooh, what's the date now, it's the 19th isn't it, let's say the 8th of next month, so April, by the 8th of April, will win this exclusive prize coming your way, yes, a well sought after toilet roll will be sent to you. So whoever gets most likes on their story will win this coveted toilet roll. And just to keep you inspired, I'm gonna put this toilet roll there on, on Buddha's head, <sighs> maybe not. <clears throat> and uh, that could be winging its way to you. All you've got to do is post it on the Readers and Writers Lounge Facebook page and get the most likes before that deadline. Uh, to inspire you I'm going to read you my own story that I've done, I've put myself up for this task and uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's called The Conjuring of Peter Pan. All children except one grow up one sunny day, when Wendy was two years of age, she played wistfully in the garden. She plucked a flower and ran, delighted, to her mother's side. Miss Darling placed her hand on her heart and cried. Oh, why can't you remain like this forever? Henceforth, she knew she must grow up. And one day, she feared her mother would not love her the way she did that summer's day. The fear of losing her mother's love grew when her brother John was born, and she heard her father say things about stocks and shares, and her mother say that they would get by. There was always enough food, but there was less time for her and her mother's kisses. Wendy heard her mother plead with her father. Perhaps that man will come back and pay us the pound he owes us, and we will be fine for a whole month. Mr. Darling said a lot of words Wendy didn't understand, but they sounded like none of them were good news. When Michael was born, and he was two years old, and soon Wendy realised he would know that one day, he would have to grow up. Wendy wondered if Mother might have cared if Michael grew up and moved out without even a single sunny day shared in the garden of number 14. One night when the moon was missing, Wendy had a night without sleep. She saw, for the first time, a crack of light cut across the nursery where her and her brothers slept. It was Mrs Darling, Wendy was going to whisper to her mother and say, Are you quite fine, mother? 
but there was something in the way her mother crept that said to Wendy she should stay quite still. Miss Darling stooped over Michael's cot, tucked in his blanket, and whispered something tender and yet threatening in his ear. Wendy thought it must be something nice, because although Miss Darling was strict, she was loving. Miss Darling moved to the bed next to Wendy's, where she loomed over her little brother John. This time Wendy could hear the word she used. You drain the life from me. I once was chased by every handsome young bachelor, and now I am a prisoner, fading to old age, towards death. Whoosh! Miss Darling had turned, her breath climbed Wendy's face, and you, my firstborn, will never be as beautiful and innocent as the day you came to to me holding that flower. Miss Darling left the room and a loathing darkness followed her. Wendy did not sleep a wink that night, but her mind did some new type of dreaming where the images came and burned permanent in her mind. From then on, Wendy saw something new. The new thing was quite comfortable living in that house with them, but she was not at all comfortable with it being there. It was a shadow that had accompanied her mother each night into the nursery. Wendy would have said something about it, but it was always there, somewhere near her mother. It was loathing and could only be explained as a type of darkness that goes on forever without going anywhere at all. Wendy was not sure if the shadow controlled her mother if it was a part of her mother, or if her mother controlled it, and until she knew, she could not utter a word about the shadow that nobody else saw. Wendy might have told her Nana. She was old and shaggy-haired like a dog. She barked at them when she wanted them to be quiet like a dog. She had completed her mother's commands loyally like a dog. She was happy with bed and board like a dog and she turned her head to the side and looked at you with a curious face when she didn't understand what it was you had to say. Like a dog. Therefore Wendy said nothing to her nana. Wendy was of the age where she felt more like a lady and boys looked at her longer. She didn't know why the boys looked at her longer, but she did think it was funny and rather silly. Then one day, while walking back from school, Wendy passed a dress shop that was not there before Monday. She fell instantly in love. It was a deep and meaningful love because her chest hurt and her eyes swelled and her feet tingled. The dress was light and elegant and had thin straps of lace and the lightest sky blue dye that matched the heavenly glare she made especially for this one dress. The price tag was also shining with silver paint and it made the dress fly away in Wendy's mind. The ticket had read one whole pound, a sum her father would have delivered kittens for, before exploding into a puff of engine steam. Here, a pound. At first she could only see the man's face. He was youthful and smiling, and on his head he had a spiked green hat with a feather lodged in one side. The man was wearing an old green suit that was torn and worn into tethers. You are the young Wendy Darling, living at number 14? I am, mister. I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. I'm Mr Pan. You can call me Peter. I borrowed this pound from your Mr Darling before... You were even born, and now I'd like it very much if you could return it. Peter rubbed the coin, and seemingly another identical coin fell out of it. Here is another coin. 
That pound Mr. Darling gave me came with some good advice regarding stocks and shares. This is his cut and our business is concluded. Thank you, Mr. I mean, Peter. Maybe there's something more I can do. There was a youthful glint in Peter's eye. Wendy was staring at the glint like it was a hypnotist's pocket watch. Peter's voice was dreamlike as he spoke. There is a sadness in your eye that does not belong to one as young as you. Maybe I could take that sadness away from you if you were to return just one of those pounds. There is? Well, I suppose you're right, but I think you're telling lies. My sadness can't be sold. Wendy had expected Peter to be very unhappy with her abruptness. Instead, Peter was dancing, weaving and wobbling around on the pavement outside of that shop, as joyous as a basket of puppies. You are clever, he sung. Sadness just can't be taken. But the things that make you sad, that is another matter. I don't believe you. You just want me to give back father's money. Well, let me strike you another pact. Spend one of those pounds on that blue dress. Take it home and not one person will think it new. Then when you wake, the things that made you sad will be gone. Then forever you'll be young and special in your mother's eyes. Peter mounted one of those bikes with a wheel bigger than a horse and he pedalled it into the sunlight. It almost seemed like it was a flying away. The dress was beautiful, and Wendy had never known what it was to feel something so new and beautiful hung from her. Her hand pressed open the door. She smelled the old wood and the sage. She delighted at the rustle of crisp paper as it wrapped the perfect blue dress. She pushed a coin across the counter and left it there for the shopkeeper to pick up. True to Peter's words, Nobody saw her dress, even when she danced from room to room in it, even when she sat at the dinner table straighter than she'd ever sat before, even when she smiled and laughed broadly. She remembered Peter's smile then. It had been playful in the middle and selfish in the corners. Wendy wanted to give the pound to her mother. She wanted more than anything for her and her father to praise her for bringing them this pound. She knew it made her mother very happy when she could have the things other people in her street had. But when she entered the study where Mr and Mrs Darling poured over sheets of paper, her mother simply said, not now dear. When Michael and John pushed through the door, her mother kissed them on the top of their heads and sent them away. Little fire grew in Wendy's stomach, and she was sure that she hated her brothers, and it was far better before they were not yet born. That night, the nursery door creaked open, and a crack of light was cut off by a shadow. Wendy closed her eyes tightly. She felt safe with her dress still crisp new against her. She waited for her mother's poisonous whispers. There was ghostly movement, rustling, gasping, jabbing, thuds. Wendy could not open her eyes, not until she heard her nana scream. The light from the fully open door cast up and onto the ceiling where John and Michael were. Their bodies were splayed open and hung by long, shining blades, like pelts of exotic animals. Wendy thought of Peter then, seemingly flying away on the top of his penny farthing. He was there in her mind, like them flying on her ceiling, round and in the blood rain. Wendy never left the room. She would fight and bite if anyone ever tried to move her or touch her dress. 
She was wearing that same blue dress the day she died, some 60 years later. Miss Darling would come and kiss Wendy tenderly each day, and never did she whisper poison in her ear. She sat as still as a, the mannequin that once displayed the dress, and in her mind, her and her brothers flew, flew on and on into the sun, and never, never did they find land. So that is uh, my very dark story. Um, please like it. I want my toilet roll back. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and, and <laughs> just uh, that, that, that's that little task for you. I hope uh, that everybody stays safe during this uh, time where there's a lot of worry and a lot of panic. Please look after each other. Please look after your neighbors. Please look after the elderly. Do a little bit of shopping for them. Try not to take everything off the shelves at once, only what you need uh, to get you by. And um, until next time, keep in touch and keep looking for the other stories that will pop up. Have a little look and remember to like them. Bye.